Good morning, everybody. It's Monday morning. I'm Daryl Crow, and we've got a couple of great video tips for you on how you can paint better. And helping me with today's question is Joe Kaczynski. How are you, Joe? Hey, Daryl. How you doing? How's everybody out there in painting land? Well, you know, we're thankful about one thing. What is that, Joe? We're thankful for weather people. Weather people? Yes, that's what? right. I'd like an explanation of that, if you don't mind. Well, if it wasn't for the weatherman, I would not have known that spring arrived last week. Because every time I go outside and look, I still see winter. But I am relieved to know. Absolutely relieved. You know what I now know, Joe? What would that possibly be, Daryl? It's spring. Wow, so spring has sprung, so to speak. So let's spring right into these questions. What have you got for us today? I've got a couple of interesting ones. One is from Frank from Minnesota. Okay. And he said, you know, I've been buying these little portable easels that cost like 15 to $20. Dollars, and uh, the only problem is it keeps falling over on me every time I use it. Is it possible? What do you suggest to fix that issue? Well, you know something, I don't know if I have exactly the kind of desktop easel that you have, Frank, but I had the same problem. I buy these uh, st small stand rights that run about $19, $18. I think when I first started 20 years ago, they were a whole lot less. And over the years, I've got about 30 or 40 of them that I have around the studio, and I carry them with me everywhere. And one day I had, uh, you know, and it's, it's invariably, what happens is that the easel is sitting on the desk, Joe, and people are painting, all of a sudden it goes over forward and right onto someone's, uh, they bring the whole painting, you know, they get an impression on their uh, blouse or uh, t-shirt. Would that be considered impressionist art? We'll, we'll uh, continue right on, Joe. Okay, Joe. <laughs> all right. So anyway, what I did is I went down to a sheet metalist and I explained the problem. And he came up with an interesting idea, Joe. What was that, Daryl? Okay, let me just grab this easel. You see, the problem here is that when th these three legs are out like this, this one has a tendency to move, and it comes in. Especially if you're sliding, you're putting pressure here, and um, the easel is flying backwards, okay? Then what happens is that it collapses and falls over. So we sat there and looked at it. I don't know, but maybe you can get a close up right here. Okay, you see where that nut is, Joe? Yes. That is a rivet in reality, uh, the way they ship it from the manufacturer. So what I did is I drilled out that rivet and I put a bolt and a locking nut on it. And so this holds it securely. And if you want, carry around, especially if you're an instructor and you're using a lot of these easels, you can carry around a small uh, ranch, open in, that you can use to slighten it up tightly. They, since they are locking washers, they will not loosen on their own. So I carry this little ranch with me, and if I ever need to, all I have to do is come right here and tighten it up. But you know something? People who were absolutely brutal in using these easels find this to be very, very steady. So in my toolbox, I always carry one of these small wrenches. Now I know some of you are saying, toolbox? You're an artist, why would you have a toolbox? Well, there's a few things that I like to carry with me. Why not I show them to you, okay, Joe? Daryl, why don't you show the people what you really carry in a toolbox? You know, Joe, I think that that's a brilliant idea, but I'm going to make one alteration. Why don't I show them what I'm really carrying? That's a good idea. Why, why didn't I think of that? I always like to carry a screwdriver because some of the uh, medium tins that we use uh, have uh, these paint, and it's just easy to go ahead and lift it up. It also serves as a steady stick, so if I want to rest my hand on, uh, on the edge of the canvas that's uh, partly dry, I could go ahead and I have good... Uh, steady uh, uh, lever. So that's one thing I carry around. For uh, tubes of paint where the cap gets stuck, I always like to carry a pair of pliers. Now I'm going to give you a bit of a caution on it. With these pot pliers, you can actually destroy your paint lids. So put them on the widest setting. 
okay? See that? And then set it around the lid and then turn it. Just enough pressure for it to loosen. You have to hold firmly. Let me show you what I mean. You know, I just had a thought. One of our questions that we have here is from uh, uh, one of our senior citizens. And he says, I'm a senior and have a weakened left hand, so I really have problems opening some of my acrylic paint tubes. I try to keep the tubes clean, but they still become hard to open. Now, when I'm painting at home, I use hot water to soften the ends. That works pretty good. Other times, I've used pliers to open them. But as a result, some of my tubes have become twisted, and the caps on the tubes are smashed from using the pliers. Please help. So I really think that this is going to fit in with what we're doing here. Okay, well that was a, a, a good question and I knew we had that question come in, uh, but there's a couple of things you do not want to do with your tubes of paint with the pliers. First off, you want to use a channel lock. You do not want to use a needle nose or long nose plier because you see, um, if you use a channel lock, some of these tubes are a lot wider than just this one I have, okay? But so I like to open the channel locks to the widest possible position. And the second thing is it fits better around the uh, cap than the other position. And the next thing is you hold it firmly and you just start to exert a small amount of pressure, see? And uh, when you tighten it up, tighten it up by hand, not by uh, the pliers. The other thing you do not want to do is I've seen people with two pliers. They'll put pliers on the bottom and then pliers on the top, and they'll go in two directions at once. And that really does destroy the uh, uh, tubes of paint. Okay, now the other tools that we use are these. I always carry a level with me. Because you know something, Joe? What's that, Daryl? What good does it to have a level canvas and your easel is not level? You know, that, wow, <laughs> God, you never cease to amaze me. Oh, go ahead. So anyway, I, when I set up my easel, I always check to make sure that it's level. And then I check to see that once the canvas is on top, I'll put this right on top of the canvas to double check to make sure it's level. That way you're going to get straight horizons and, and uh, the painting is going to look um, much better because there are certain elements of a painting like water that really has to be parallel and level. And so we want to make sure that we accomplish that. Now the last thing I, I have is something that every mother would have liked to have had since her first child and that's called a tube bringer. <laughs> Okay, now it's great for toothpaste too besides, uh, but I like a sturdy one. They make them in plastic and they make them in metal. And I break a lot of plastic ones when I'm trying to squeeze paint out of a metal tube or aluminum tube. So I bought the sturdier one. It'll save you money in the long run. This one's from Gill Manufacturing and it's excellent. You just go ahead, you set the tube in and you turn it. And that pretty much completes my tool kit. I do always take extra paper towels and masking tape and hand cleaner too. Well, you know, that was a very, very useful answer for a change. And I'm very <laughs> proud of it. <laughs> Our next question, uh, a little complex. Conflicts? Complex, yes. Okay. And the user buys different size canvases. You know, 16 by 20, 11 by 20, and, and so forth, and can never really figure out the proper placement of pictures or objects on the canvas when she's trying to paint because of the different canvas sizes. She can't get the right area. What do you suggest for that? Well, Joe, I came across that problem very early, and I think every artist in the world and every art student in the world has come across, how do I put my objects in the right place on a canvas? And we're working with photos of different sizes. They could be 8 by 10, they could be a little 3 by 5. Uh, a lot of times we use postcards as a reference, or we'll use calendar pictures, or uh, pictures we see in the newspaper magazine sent to us by friends, uh, and so forth. And uh, then we try to select the right kind of canvas, 
And what we really want is a systematic methodology of being able to uh, locate, no matter the size of the canvas, those objects. So what I did, Joe, is I actually built the spreadsheet that will do that. Wow. And uh, it, do, it does it very nicely. It's a very simple spreadsheet. You just enter in certain parameters on the spreadsheet and it will work quite nicely for you. And in fact, we may just put a little Camtasia film on how to uh, work that and amend it to this uh, tip. What do you think? That sounds like an excellent idea. That'll come in very handy for people. Okay, but basically, let me go ahead and show you what I've got on the easel back here for just a minute, okay? Okay. Here's a postcard or a greeting card that I got from uh, one of my previous trips of a lighthouse. I liked it because the lighthouse is very simple to do. And uh, what I decided to do just to answer this question was to show this postcard. Now let's show the sample painting I did. Now, you can, if I was to place this postcard right here, you'd see that the elements are all in, like the, uh, the lighthouse is right where it should be. So is the house. The heights are about the same. Uh, did a little changes on the trees, but they're in the right position. And we've got the back uh, rocks here and the side rocks and the beach along the line. They're all in the same proportion as on the uh, postcard. Now, I could have done this with a 24 by 36 inch canvas or uh, an 8 by 10 canvas. It did not matter. Okay, here's the key. And I'll just grab a ruler. You always have to have a ruler. Okay, when you take a look at this postcard, you have to decide which elements did I want to transfer to my canvas. Well, the one thing that struck me when I looked at this was a lot of sky and a very low horizon. So I need to know where the horizon is on, on any canvas that I decide, okay? And what I like to do is also go down to these locations and go ahead and I see that this is three and uh, three quarter inches in entire length, okay? So what I do is I decide, okay, I'm gonna divide this into parts, okay? Just for reference being, I'm gonna say that a quarter inch is one part. So uh, three inches is 12 parts and three quarters is three parts, so it's 15 parts high. You get that, Joe? Yep. I know that's hard for you. Now, look at this, the horizon's right at three inches, right? Yes, it is. Okay, but you know, I don't wanna be calculating parts right now. Then why are you talking about it? Well, because all you, you do is you wanna keep the ratio. So I know that this is now three parts from the bottom, right? That's correct. What I want to do is mark down on a sheet of paper that the horizon level is three parts from the bottom. Now the next thing I want to know is where is the right side of this uh, lighthouse from the edge of the postcard. So I'll go ahead and again, all I do is measure this and it is now uh, one, two, three, four, eight, nine parts from the side. See that? Yep. Okay. And I know that the whole width of this is five inches, and you can see there. So I should now have four measurements. The uh, height of the postcard is at three and three quarter inch. The width of the postcard is five inches. I plug those into the spreadsheet. I also plug the values of the canvas size, which is uh, 18 by 24 in this case. Now I've divided everything into parts, so the spreadsheet will calculate how many of uh, the parts into the actual measurement of inches for me. Wow, that's really helpful. It is, and, and in fact, I'll show you the printout in a second. Now. I also know that it's now uh, nine parts from the side of the postcard to where the lighthouse is. And I can also tell you that the distance between the lighthouse and the house is one part, okay? I see that. And the distance of the house is one, two, three, four parts. And it is exactly one 
Oh, I guess that's about five parts from the side of the canvas or from the uh, postcard to the beginning of the house. And then I can even calculate this if I want to. I think if memory serves me right, it's one, yep, it's one, one part high. So with all of these calculations, I plug them into the spreadsheet and here's what the spreadsheet tells me, okay? Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is put your canvas height or width in inches, okay? So I did this, okay. Now, for this first one, which is the horizon level, remember I said the height of the photo in parts is 17? Okay, we almost don't care what the actual number of inches are of the photo, okay? We only care about the number of parts. And so I know that the height of the horizon from the bottom is three parts, see that? So we have three parts here, there's 17 parts, and then I put down the height of the um, uh, canvas, and it goes ahead and calculates that it's at 18% from the bottom, and it tells me it's three and a quarter inches. So I know that I need to paint my uh, horizon at three and a quarter inch. If I want a different size canvas, the only thing I have to do is change that one number and it'll give me the new measurement. So I put down here as a step one, tape horizon with top edge of masking tape at three and a quarter inches from bottom of canvas. So the notes are the notes that I make for myself. Now, the lighthouse height was uh, eight parts out of that 17 parts. And see, uh, we're dealing with an 18 inch wide or high canvas that means that it's taking 47% of the canvas space. So the item height in inches is 847. Since we know that it sits right at three and a quarter inch, we are roughly 11 and three quarter inch from the bottom is the very top of the lighthouse. See how that works, Joe? Oh, that's amazing. And then I did the same thing, the lighthouse from the right edge and the house uh, light space, that's the space in between it. So you find it's 1.06 inches and so forth. And, and that's exactly how easy it is to do, Joe. So do you think this is a good approach? I think it's an excellent approach and I have a better one. Oh yeah? How about if anybody would actually like a working spreadsheet that they just simply send us an email and we'll be happy to send it to them. You know, that's a good idea, Joe. I wish I'd actually thought of that. Well, you probably did, and I just took the words right out of your mouth as usual. <laughs> anyway, folks, that's exactly what I'd like to do. If you'd like to have this uh, spreadsheet, go ahead and send me an email at daryl at darylcrow.com, and I'll send it to you, and we'll include that little Camtasia film that shows you exactly how to use it. I hope you've enjoyed these tips today. I'm Daryl Crow, and this is... Joe Kaczynski. And together, we know that no matter what, you can paint if you have a want to.